Oh, dear. No, oh, dear. Seriously, though, what the f was I thinking? I have no idea who real tough candy is. She hired me because she thought adding a British presenter would give her more street cred. Hey developers, it's RTC here, doing a portfolio review. Mine! It's hard to be objective, but I'm gonna try as much as possible because this is the portfolio that actually got me hired at my first software development job. I thought it could be helpful to share some things I did right and share some things I could have done a little better. So this portfolio is now archived on my GitHub. If you don't know, you can actually deploy static sites very easily on GitHub. It's great for portfolios. Chapeau. Now, the first thing that pops into my head when I see this, of course, I'm sure some of you out there already recognize this as well. This is straight out of the box, 0% customized. This is an HTML5 up theme. The reason I was hesitant to change the colors, the fonts, the animations, like the fade-ins and stuff was because this was built with something called Jekyll. Jekyll is a static site generator and it uses the Ruby programming language. I don't know Ruby. I didn't know Ruby at the time. So this is not a good thing because if it comes right out of the box, these colors and everything is just stock. That tells an, a potential employer that this developer isn't really getting creative at all. Uh, and there's good chance that they've seen this exact portfolio layout. If we go down here, let's, this is another thing here. So here's a button, explore the love. <laughs> that doesn't really do anything. I would have, this This button is, is useless. Now, if it would have brought me completely to the bottom or something, okay, that would have saved me some time, but this button saves the viewer, the user, uh, exactly zero seconds. So the projects I have here, Dev Spotlight, Get Her Done, Barncat Digital, Bethy's Backyard, RealToughCandy.com, my YouTube channel, a contact form, or no, this is, oh yeah, this is the, this is the good part. You don't want to miss this contact form and a project I just decided to throw in here. Now, because of this portfolio's massive projects, some of these were actually really big projects because I included a few freelance projects. I'm not going to go through every project here. We'll go through the layout of one of them and maybe uh, talk about another one briefly. Uh, but there's so many other elements in here I want to check out and show you guys and explain what's going on. Let me go down here. And so this is co this is a kind of a cool little section. It's a contact section. Let's dish. Uh, the other thing, I know, I know I'm kind of backtracking here, but hovering over these, I can't read this freaking font. So going to the contact section, this was another thing I had a hard time figuring out with this template or with the static site generator was how to incorporate a contact form with a static site. So my solution to that was just to, you know, let the bots go wild. Here's my email if anyone wants to know. Uh, submission form, <laughs> with which this link is, I don't even think it's valid anymore. Uh, Twitter or by carrier pigeon. So throwing a little humor in there and some homemade Photoshop here, just kind of like a, I don't know what you want to call it, an oversized business card. So, and I love how I put, I do true full stack as opposed to false full stack. I, I would have done this differently. I don't know exactly what right now, but I would not use this picture again. So I put YouTube on here because that it was a, even I think I had maybe, I don't know, how many subscribers do I have here? Does that even say, I think maybe a thousand or 2000 subscribers. So this was the best I could do right now. Again, this, this artwork really, I mean, it does reflect me because I love graffiti fonts and like really just like garish colors and stuff. But I don't, I don't know. It just looks a little unprofessional, but I mean, this was from 
over three and a half years ago on my YouTube. I was really proud of it. And it is a hook for a lot of people. There are so many people where when you say, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, like, oh, really? Tell me more. This is a really good icebreaker. It also showcases my communication skills. I was doing a lot more tutorials back then. I was doing a lot more heavily tech focused topics. And that is something employers do like seeing because they want to see, number one, that you're a real person. And number two, they're able to see your communication skills. And communication skills are just as important as actual raw coding skills in the operational software industry. I wanted to fill out my portfolio with solid projects. Um, and I knew like stuffing it with side things like YouTube is a great thing to have, but I'm not applying to YouTuber jobs. You know what I mean? I'm applying to full stack web developer jobs. So I highlighted uh, a few things up here that would illustrate that. So this Bethy's Backyard was built uh, with PHP and Twig and MySQL. This is a React app. This is a Git simulator I built. Git is a huge skill, so I wanted to showcase that, as well as the Dev Spotlight. That was a really fun one, um, showcasing some front-end skills. But So that's four projects, and then I had realtoughcandy.com, which is WordPress. So I'm like, oh, that's this. most employers, unless it's a WordPress place, they don't really want to see that. Even back then, I knew that. So I, I stuck that in there just to start beefing it up and Four just four projects didn't seem like enough for me. And here is this like extra projects. I'm like, well, you know, even five's not enough because this one's WordPress. This project was a project in progress and it's just weak. In these projects, I have screenshots from the actual project. And I'm going to show you something that was really strong that I did with this portfolio. This is like the cake, the protein, the teriyaki uh, beef jerky bits that you don't want to miss. So I'm going to come back to that in just a second. But this app, I would have just, if I if I could do it all over again, I would not include this. Uh, it's a weak project and it's a work in pr progress, which is not a bad thing. Um, but really the premise, I'm just going to read this really quick. So the challenge, notice the format of this. It's really important. Challenge. Mobile app users who have large fingers are a challenge for developers, UX UI specialists, and web designers. Elements that are spaced appropriately for normal users are too close together and often unusable for this audience. Solution. Fat finger turns a tester's cursor into a life-size oversized finger to help develop app elements more inclusively. And cetera, et cetera, and cetera, et cetera, <laughs> and cetera just go with it. Uh, so here's the app. I mean, it's just really basic. And I, th I thought it'd be a cool idea. This is actually a thumbprint um, that I transformed uh, with some effort. I just, it's just kind of half baked. If I saw this as a, an employer, I'd say, okay, this is, I guess it's, this is kind of cool, but this is it. But let's go up here. We'll go to the dev spotlight. I explained this project just like the one I showed you, Fat Finger. The format is the exact same with all these projects. So challenge, solution, and outcome. The reason I picked this format is because it mirrors what's called the PAR method, which is problem, action, result. This is essentially the same thing as a par, the PAR method, only I'm using a little different wording with challenge, solution, and outcome. And so using this format, you specifically target your development process, certain phases in your development process, so that again, you show your potential employer that you see the value that you're creating when you solve this problem. It really emphasizes and illustrates your problem solving skills. Let's click this. I don't even know if this is gonna work. Awesome, it still works. Let's see, um, let me try Mirza. Oops. As you can see here, we have an interactive uh, terminal, simulated terminal. If you don't know how to use the terminal, you can also click the pictures. Casadero, these are like, um, Polaroid style photos. The biggest, best thing I did with this project uh, was was maybe not even the project it's itself, but knowing what I did 
why I did it and the outcome of it. This portfolio helped me get my first dev job. There is some mojo in here. There is some magic. It's far from perfect though, and it does need some polishing, but it got me a job. So I keep this portfolio on my GitHub for a few reasons. Also because I reference it in my course, How to Get a Job in Web Development, back to back five-star reviews. It's on realtoughcanny.io. It's helped hundreds of people land a job in the industry. Check it out. I think the self-criticism is going to stop here. I could go on with this. Maybe we'll do a part two, but I hope this video was insightful. I hope you enjoyed it. Let YouTube know that you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm RTC and I'll see you in the next video.